If we believe that we can dabble in the dominion of darkness, or literally, willfully, knowingly serve Satan and not have it affect every aspect of our lives, then we are sadly mistaken. I want to plead with you to consider some things that I want to share with you from the Word of God. I'd like to prove to you that our enemy does not have your best interest at heart. In the garden, if we go all the way back to the book of Genesis, well, let me just read it to you and see what happened and what didn't happen. God told Adam in Genesis 2, You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat of it, you will surely die. Genesis 3 Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, or you will die. Please note, God did not say you must not touch it. And I would imagine when Eve reached out and touched that fruit and didn't I, that the doubt that had already been planted in her heart grew. The serpent said, You will not surely die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her. Thank you, Adam, for not stopping Eve. And he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Note the very first emotion that Adam and Eve felt when they sinned was shame. But that's not what this video is about. I want to skip to Genesis 3, 20. Adam named his wife Eve because she would become the mother of all the living. The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. And the Lord God said, The man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. Now, if Satan has our best interest at heart, why did he not then say to Eve, Hey, now let's go over here to the tree of life and you can live forever. Because living forever for us, for mankind, was not his goal for us. Remember, he has come to kill, steal, and destroy. So don't believe the lie now, if you're serving him, that you'll live forever. He could have done that back in the garden by encouraging Adam and Eve to then eat from the tree of life. But he didn't, because that was not his desire. And those who serve him will not live forever. In fact, let's go to the book of Revelation and see what his end is. In Revelation 20, this is at the end of the seven-year tribulation, after the Antichrist and the false prophet have already been judged. Revelation 20, beginning in verse 1, And I saw an angel coming down out of heaven, having the key to the abyss, and holding in his hand a great 
chain. He seized the dragon, that ancient serpent who is the devil or Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. He threw him into the abyss and locked and sealed it over him to keep him from deceiving the nations any more until the thousand years were ended. After that, he must be set free for a short time. So let's see what happens when he's set free for a short time. When the thousand years are over, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them for battle. In number, they are like the sand on the seashore. That's an amazing thing to me, that even after seeing Christ seated on his throne in Jerusalem for a thousand years, there will still be those who prefer wickedness and evil over righteousness and good. They marched across the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of God's people, the city he loves, but fire came down from heaven and devoured them, and the devil, who deceived them, was thrown into the lake of burning sulfur where the beast and the false prophet had been thrown. They will be tormented day and night forever and ever. That is Satan's end. And will be the end of all those who choose him or who simply reject Christ. Because we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Because despite our sin, despite our rejection of God, our rebellion against God, He proved His love for us in this while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. God loves us for some crazy reason, so much that he literally came in the flesh and died on a cross for our sin, atoning for our sin, paying the penalty for our sin. And all we need do to attain eternal life, forgiveness, and cleansing of our sin is place our faith in what he did on the cross on our behalf. Salvation is so simple, a child could understand it, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but have eternal life. Each and every one of us have a choice to make in our lifetime, and none of us knows when that life will end. So I would encourage you not to wait. And that choice is to place our faith in Christ or to reject Him. And again, there are those who reject Him who don't just reject Christ. They also literally, willfully choose Satan. And my question to those people and to those who simply reject the free gift of salvation that God offers to all, through simple faith in Christ is why would anyone choose to serve the little g God who wants to take your life rather than the capital G God who gave his life so that you can have and I can have eternal life. Why would anyone reject him? Ask yourself that question. Have you?